the City Council meeting for April 17th. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And the roll? Vaughn. Sullivan. Aye. Shower. Kenny. Aye. Gustafson. Here. Gustafson. Here. Clistic. Here. Belzac. Here. Five present and two absent. We have a quorum. It takes us to questions, comments, and announcements of a general nature. This is an item on our agenda that allows members of the audience to come forward and share with the council anything uh, that they that is not on the agenda that they think is critical and needs to they need to inform the council so is there anyone who would like to address the council on any issue other than an agenda item hi just state your name yep. dave kaduk uh back again sorry i missed last time we had a little bit of work travel stuff so uh hope everything went well um yeah i just wanted to call um check up on the progress on uh 67th street i know uh, uh, Mr. Gombach and I had gone back and forth on email on a couple of things, um, and it seems that the speed study has been completed um, and that there's a lot being left up to uh, law enforcement uh, in terms of to stop speeding, uh, slow down drivers, make things a little bit more safe. Um, so I just wanted to see if that is kind of what we're doing moving forward or if there's any other measures we'll be looking to take. At this time, there's no uh, other measures. Okay. Uh, we did look at the actual speed, speed and the obedient uh, 85th percentile of the speed was approximately 30, 31 miles per hour. Now, yes, there were some occasions where there was several vehicles that were in excess of that. Uh, again, whether or not those were actual um, emergency vehicles, mm -hmm. unknown, but sure. you could put some stipulation to that as well. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if uh, Greg, can you co comment on 67th Street any further? Um, we always um, have this directed patrol, and so uh, officers see um, the different areas where there's directed patrol. 67th Street is one of those, and so they go out almost daily and uh, monitor that roadway. Sure. Yeah, and they do a great job. And I got somebody pulled over in front of my house. I put up one of those signs, you know, drive like your kids live here. It, pulled out right in front of him. It was made for a great photo op. Um, and so I appreciate that. I, I don't want it to just become a reactive situation. I think that the nature of the street really encourages those kind of outlier cases of like, sure, maybe 85% traffic is going 30, 35 miles an hour, but it's that dangerous 15% that might be a little bit worse than your standard residential street. And I would love to know what does that 15% look like? And when we're getting those drivers doing 45, 50, 60 miles an hour, during morning times, during kids are getting on the bus, that sort of stuff. That's what's concerning to me. And I think I would love to look into some measures that maybe are easier, you know, the, the crossing signs, you know, the triangle with the two people, you know, doing that one. There are a couple crossing spots like at the bus stops. Um, I know Ridge, there's a bus stop. And then further up at, um, I believe it's Wilmette uh, and Ridge, there's two different names there right by Delay School. There's also a lot of crossings that happen there, maybe additional, um, you know, the more like Abbey Road style uh, marking in the street rather than just the two streets. Just to raise awareness of, hey, you guys are on a residential street, going 45 miles an hour, not a great idea, um, because I do get to that bus stop twice a day, uh, two kids in different grades, and I do see a lot of 40, 45 miles an hour during that time, which is concerning. So I don't know if we need to do anything as extreme as the ballers, that sort of stuff, but just maybe some additional signage, make it feel a little more residential could also have an impact and then we don't have to rely as much on um, enforcement. If I may comment there. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I had recommended in the email, I refer to them as gnomes, uh, which basically are those little placards that show, um, sometimes they'll have a little vision with a flag, hey, our children live here. Yeah. In my opinion, those have been very, very proactive, but residents need to be vigilant and need to move them around. Mm -hmm. So when when the motorists see them, hey, it catches their eye. Whereas a sign, if you put a sign up and leave it there in one, you know, uh, I've been in situations where it says uh, slow children. In my opinion, again, somewhat of a useless sign because it's been there for years. Sure. 
I've had residents say, let's put up a slow children's sign, and the sign is already out there. So again, that becomes stale. Sure. Um, you know, maybe if there's a program that the city can help initiate for residents like yourself, they're very inexpensive. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And maybe it's a it's a share cost share program, uh, but residents need to be part of the program. We can put up a crosswalk, sure. Whether or not we put up the crosswalk, um, again, the kids are here today. They're not here tomorrow because they moved. Either they've moved or moved to a different school, sure. or the bus routes change. You know, we see quite a bit of that. Or sure. every year, for example, we go back and look at <coughs> snowplow routes and we check with the schools so we don't pile snow on corners. So while well, crosswalks are somewhat effective, they become obsolete. And it's another maintenance where you have to keep them, you know, fresh, refreshed uh, to where it's really not worth the exercise sometimes. Okay. Yeah, and I totally, you know, that's why I'm here to be educated. So anything else um, that we can consider, even the, um, with the police, if there's some sort of awareness thing, I know that was another thing someone else had brought up, like letting people that live on the side streets, like, hey, you know, you guys live here too. A lot of times those are the people that are doing a lot of the speeding as well. I am all for doing whatever. I'll get creative. I'll stand out there with the sign and, you know, everyone's got to slow down on a weekend, maybe when it gets a little nicer, but, um, and just let people know that it is a residential street and those extreme speeds um, do cause concern. I don't want to get to a point where we're waiting for something to happen to then, you know, take the next step. I would right. rather take that step now. Those bailers are working. I, I mean, to me, they seem nice. I mean, I love them. I mean, I did see, uh, you do see cars, like maybe they like threading the needle and going through super fast, but for the most part, I do see people slow down. But I live directly on the um, west side of it, and obviously the, the policeman had pulled that person over like right in front of my, so they had obviously gone through them and then got pulled over. So yes, I think that anything like that is helpful. Um, and we saw the reduction in traffic, which I think is good. It's that outlier, that 15% that could be, you know, maybe it's not 35, 40, but it's 45, 50, 60, that sort of stuff is what's concerning because of the nature of the, how long and straight the street I is. I haven't seen it get up to 60, but at the same time, our reports also document the times. And if they're habitual, obviously that gives the police department yeah. an opportunity to be there during those times. Okay. And many times, if not all the times, those motors that are speeding are local residents. For sure. Yeah. Um, so again, you know, it's, it's enforcement. And I think with the traffic signal, that'll be coming up. Uh, I'm excited about that, yeah. Within uh, three months at 67th Street, that'll be another opportunity to help gauge on what will be happening I'm thinking there'll be a reduction even in traffic, cool. um, just for the reason that that light will be the secondary, or not the primary light if you want to say, primary traffic will be clear in Hills Road, northbound and southbound. Are people going to wait, want to wait approximately two minutes, or are they going to go to 63rd Street, for example? Let's hope. All right. I won't take any more time. Thank you all. I'll very much. So. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, it takes us to uh, approval of the minutes. I'd like a motion and a second for the approval of the Administrative Finance Committee of the Whole for February 22nd, uh, 2023. So, sorry. Uh, moved by Alderman Kenny. No, no, by... nope, take, take, take that back. Okay. You heard, I heard by... minutes, I was thinking of my regular city council meeting. I apologize, Mayor. I wasn't here then, 22nd. Right. Okay, I moved by Alderwoman Sullivan, second by Alderman Belzac. Any questions or comments? You know the roll? Sullivan. Aye. Belzac. Aye. Gustafson. Aye. Shower. Oh, he's not here. Um, Kenny. Abstain. I have three ayes, two absent, and one abstention. Okay. It, who did? Tom. You didn't call it's Tom. Okay. I'm sorry. Tom Plistic. Plistic. Aye. <laughs> You're absent. Oh, that's abstain. Right. Minutes. Uh, the <laughs> motion you passes. By minutes, even that's if fine. you weren't there, if you yeah. believe if you those are reflected, but just so you know. Well, there, there, there's, there's not a lot to them, so no, there's not. I should have. I would ask them for a motion and a second for the uh, administrative finance committee of the whole for February 28, 2023. No, raise my hand. Moved by Alderman Kennedy, <laughs> seconded by Alderman Gustafson. Questions or comments? If none, the roll. Kenny. Aye. Gustafson? Aye. Klistik? Aye. Sullivan? Aye. Belzac? Aye. 
Five ayes and two absent. Those minutes are approved. And finally, motion and a second to approve the City Council minutes of April 3rd, 2023. Alderman Belzac, second by Alderwoman Sullivan. Again, questions or comments? If none, the roll. Belzac? Aye. Sullivan? Aye. Kenny? Aye. Klistic? Aye. Gustafson? Aye. Five ayes and two absent. The minutes have been approved. It takes us to receiving of communications to any of the older people have minutes and any uh, messages they'd like to convey to the council. Mary? Yes, um, I did receive a communication today and I've reached out to um, Municipal Services, Dan Gombeck and his team about um, a mattress and some furniture that had been dumped or managed to get themselves off the back of a truck along North Frontage Road near the entrance of Carriage Greens along the side of the road. Um, as we all are aware, um, frontage, North Frontage Road is an IDOT road, but um, because it is fairly significant amount of stuff and um, pretty unsightly, Dan did say that they'll work on um, getting that picked up. Um, Patricia Jason had <coughs> reached out to me and I also noticed it as well. And then um, I continue to receive ongoing communications from various residents regarding the North Frontage Road, um, the fence being down, you know, all of, all of that. And I have shared with them that um, we are, in addition to coordinating things with IDOT, we um, are hopeful that a project will take place within the next two years. We are also reaching out to Senator John Curran's office and um, looping him in and hoping that he can help us expedite the process. We'll be meeting with them when we go down to Springfield this week. Yes, we will. Okay. Thank you, Mary. Anyone else? Okay. That takes us to the mayor's report, and tonight we'll be making some reappointments to people who have served on a number of our committees. Uh, the first uh, motion is for the advice. Uh, I'm asking for your advice and consent for the reappointment of John M. Breslin to the Police Pension Board. I have a motion. Alderman Belzac, seconded by Alderman Gustafson. And again, John's not here tonight. He called, he talked to me today and he's he's home ill. Any questions? If none, the roll. Belzac? Aye. Gustafson? Aye. Klistic? Aye. Kenny? Aye. Sullivan? Aye. Five ayes and two absent. The next uh, one I'm asking for your advice and consent on is a motion to approve the reappointment of John J. Armolino to the Board of Fire and Police Commissioners, and John is here tonight. Do I have a motion? Alderwoman Sullivan, second by Alderman Belzac. Any questions or comments? If none, the roll. Sullivan? Aye. Belzac? Aye. Kenny? Aye. Gustafson? Aye. Klistic? Aye. Five ayes and two absent. And finally, I'm asking for a consideration of a motion to approve the appointment of Robert Irk and Sylvie McIver to the Environmental Committee. Motion to approve. Alderman Belzac, seconded by Alderman Gustafson. Any questions or comments? If none, the roll. Belzac? Aye. Gustafson? Aye. Sullivan? Aye. Klistic? Aye. Kenny? Aye. Five ayes and two absent. Sylvia, will you and John please come forward for your swearing in? John. No. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Sylvia McIver. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Illinois and the Constitution of the State of Illinois and that I will faithfully discharge and I will faithfully discharge the duties of the duties of um, environmental committee environmental committee and the board of fire and police commission according to the best of your ability according to the best of my ability congratulations and here are your cards for you. and I personally want to thank both of you for your service um, we have great volunteers in the city. You're two of them. John, you've been on this board for a while. And I appreciate your re-upping and uh, willingness to come back. And Sylvia, as always, it's a pleasure to have you serve, knowing how much you mean this means to you. So thank you very much. And thank you for the donuts today. <laughs>
You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And a friend of mine is here from Argonne National Lab, a lady that I've gotten to know over the years on my visits to Argonne. If you're not aware of it, Argonne used to runs uh, seminars and meetings at Argonne, and during COVID, we actually met on Zoom. Um, the last one I attended was the one on batteries that we had over there, and uh, Robin's always there to greet me when I walk in. She knows I'm <laughs> the mayor of Darien. Uh, this is her area. Uh, so I'm introducing Robin Wheeler Grange, Director, Office of Community Engagement, Argonne National Lab, who's got a presentation for us tonight. Robin? Thank you so much, Mayor. It's always a pleasure to see you when the mayor comes onto the lab campus. I, he's right. I'm like, Mayor, hi. You know, I'm just always excited to see him um, because it's so important to have uh, the, the engagement of our mayors and municipal leaders right around the laboratory. Um, I'll start by telling you a quick story. So the mayor may or may not remember this, but one, on one of those Zoom calls um, uh, in early when I first began at the lab back in April 2020, we did a presentation um, of some of the science going on. And the, there was someone on the um, committee from Will County. And he said, uh, you know, this is so fantastic, the work you're doing and the contribution you're making. Um, you're the best kept secret in, on, you know, in the suburbs, the west suburbs. And I said, you know, that is my job, to make us not the best kept secret, but to actually make sure that we are a well-known entity and one that um, is viewed as a contributor and a valued um, um, entity or organization within the western suburbs and actually even beyond within our region. So I'd like to take a moment um, to talk a little bit about uh, the kind of community engagement work that the lab is engaged in. But before I start with that, just to make sure we're all on the same page about who Argonne is. Now, you're just, you're less than three and a half miles away from the laboratory, but you still may not know all of what we do. So I wanna take a moment to just fill you in on that. So, so just quickly, I will not spend time reading all of that, but just to let you know, Argonne is all about accelerating science and technology for the purposes of advancing United, the United States prosperity, economic prosperity, and security, national security. And so we have focuses in, uh, uh, you know, our primary thrust is scientific discovery, but we've got focuses in energy and climate solutions. And in fact, Sylvia uh, and I know each other because of her work on your subcommittee on environment. So she's aware of some of the work we're doing in energy and climate. Um, cutting edge research, that's the kind of facilities that we have there. Um, as I mentioned, we're about uh, security, uh, making sure that we are protected um, from threats. Uh, and then, of course, developing, this is very important and has become more important over time, developing scientific leaders in STEM for the future. So these are our sort of our thrusts. And then um, it's important to, for you also to know what we contribute to your area, to the region, and to the state and beyond. We are one point, I don't know if you knew that we are $1.15 billion institution. Lots of money. M the overwhelming majority of it comes from the Department of, Educa uh, Department of Energy, um, but we do have funds that come in from other federal uh, and state agencies. There are 3,500, and actually I just heard the lab director talk about this, we're at 3,800 employees, some of whom come from Darien, right? And nearby, uh, ent nearby communities. Um, which includes 1,800 researchers, 500 students. I sit in the uh, operations side of the laboratory and there are about 850 uh, um, administrators. And then you see the rest, 6,000 researchers that visit us, five national research centers, and we have three locations, not just here in Lamont, but we have a location at the Department of Energy and we have a new office that opened uh, March of February of 2020 in Chicago. I want to show you this quote because this helps transition to this idea of community <coughs> engagement. 
The Secretary of Energy said this, that the greatest advancements in science and technology help no one if they don't get to the people and communities who need them most. The laboratory understands that the research is tremendous, and if you haven't had a chance to visit the lab, please let me know, because I'll make sure, uh, maybe we'll do a, a tour with the council, right? You've got to see what's going on just down the street from you. It's, it's really awesome. However, that in and of itself doesn't mean anything if it's not touching communities, uh, helping communities uh, to be better, and those that live in those communities. And so this quote is actually, um, uh, has become sort of my mantra, right, as it relates to this new office that has been stood up, and it's called the Office of Community Engagement. It is only uh, two months old, because we, actually two and a half now, we um, stood it up in January. I became the director officially in January. And our mission is to just really about building relationships, seeing the mayor and him knowing that if he has a need, an interest, some si sort of innovation, a need for some sort of technical assistance, he knows to call me, right? So it's about building these collaborative, trusted relationships with local communities, as well as with the region. And we want to, uh, as I mentioned, be viewed as a contributor to the regional um, ecosystem, right? Science and technology ecosystem. I won't go through all of this, but I will call your attention to the light blue and the purple. Remember, I just mentioned, we want, one of our objectives is to make sure that we're reaching out and that we're reaching out, sharing what we do so that we can look for strategic partnerships and relationships. And we also want to invest in long-term and sometimes short-term, whatever the communities are looking for, community-connected science, right? Um, if they're, the mayor, and, and we need to circle back on this, but in one of our meetings, um, we were talking about um, energy, energy storage as it relates to um, batteries and maybe uh, transitioning fleets to EVs as opposed to using all of the fuel, diesel fuel. And um, the mayor uh, had an inquiry about what would that look like if it were, if, if your fleet of police cars became EVs. And if that was the case, and I look at the, at the chief, if that was the case, you know, what would be the benefits? What would be some of the challenges? What would the cost be? What, these are the kinds of things where Argonne can be very, very helpful because the research that we're doing is goes way beyond today. It's, it's looking 10, 20 years into the future. So we wanna, we wanna help, we wanna be engaged. Another way we wanna be engaged <coughs> is your small business community. Argonne has, I don't know the numbers, so, and I should, so pardon me for <laughs> coming without the numbers, but we do a lot of business with small, com with small businesses. And there's no reason why Darien's small business community should not be at least aware of the opportunities, if not, even able to begin to relate and, and engage around some op biz small business opportunities at the laboratory. So um, I, I'll make sure to get you some of the numbers, what we do, right, how much business we do, and how much of that business is with small business. And it'd be great to begin, I'm happy to help uh, convene meetings with our small business uh, liaison to help introduce the opportunities to the Darien Chamber of Commerce. And then lastly, and there are many other ways that we engage, but I, I didn't want to take too much time. Um, we like to have the community come to the laboratory. And so um, the, this is going to be the first, we're having an open house. Um, it's Saturday, May 20th. And this will be the first time that the lab has opened its doors in this way since 2016. So it's been a while. And part of the reason is that COVID popped up at the time that we were looking to do the next open house. So we had to wait a little bit. Um, but you'll see here that these are the kinds of um, <coughs> experiences we're hoping that uh, individuals who come will have. 
Um, there'll be pavilions with science themes. You'll be able to, um, um, utilizing your phone, customize the experience you want to have and visit the exhibits you want to exhibit. It really is gonna be a lot of fun. Now that's the good news. Here's the challenging news, don't be mad at me. But you see, this is on our website for the open house, and do you see that orange box? It says join the wait list. There was so much pent up desire to come to the laboratory that we have now filled, we're now at beyond 700 people that have signed up. And so um, I would encourage you to do this. Join the wait list. If you wanna come, families, you know, whatever, please go on our website. All you have to do is put open house in the uh, search box and you'll get to this page, join the wait list. But do me a favor, let me know. That's why I gave you my cards and for your constituents, let me know. Because if you let me know, I can't promise, but what I can do is see what I can do to, you know, internally to make it happen because it doesn't make any sense for the people who live right next door to us to not have this opportunity. I'll do my very best to make sure you're able to sort of get in beyond the wait list. Yes, Mayor? Robin, I received uh, my invitation today okay. and, and I registered. Does that mean I'm one of the... The wait, well, did it... Did you see this join the wait list? They, they, no, they approved my registration when I, after I got done. You know why? Because I think you, are you coming on Friday? I'm, I bet you that's why. I'm There's doing, a, I just signed up for the May 20 because it showed all the, the tour and all that. Yeah. It's called Partners and something. Else. That's it. Yeah. There, the day before the open house, we're having a partner day. And that's why I say, let me know if you want to <coughs> come because I'll try and work it out. That's what I signed up for. Right. Partner Day is for uh, either those non-for-profits, civic leaders who have a relationship with us already, like the mayor, or who we hope to have a relationship with. And that's taking place the day before Friday from 1 to 6.30, starting with a panel discussion, tours, ending with a reception. So you got accepted because that is not a part of this. Okay. This is general public, that's more for partners. And okay. so that's what why I say to you, let me know because there might be ways to to make sure that you get in. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, that's no, it. No, Robin, I don't know if people are aware, but our, our one of our first seminars during COVID, Argonne did a lot of research that allowed Moderna and yes. uh, Pfizer to develop the, the vaccines. Yes. Which uh, we had a whole presentation on that. Uh, that that's when we were did, we did Zoom. Right, right, right. And um, I, I have always found it fascinating, even the ones that were on um, on Zoom, the the research, the the one on batteries that we saw. The one that w I found amazing <coughs> was that we are developing batteries that might fly airplanes someday. And. <laughs> And my, my big fear was, gee, boy, if I'm on an airplane, what happens when the batteries go <laughs> kaput? <right. laughs> but um, I would advise all of you, if you haven't, haven't had a chance, to really participate. I've enjoyed every one of the seminars. And uh, we, get, we get a lot of nice people from Darien who actually attend uh, the seminar. The one on batteries was fascinating. What was really interesting was, and I think she made the comment, all these co batteries have a life of about... 15 years, and she said, just imagine 10 years from now, those cars that are driving with batteries will produce 60,000 tons of batteries that need to be recycled. She says, and we have to figure out a way to recycle those batteries. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, my God, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's quite a feat. It, at Argonne, we handle the entire life of a battery. We work on building better batteries, right? We also work on um, when the battery the has expired, then what to do with it? We have something called the resale center, and that's where that research is done. So, yes. So about uh, 11 years ago, my daughter had the opportunity to attend a young woman in engineering. I mean, she was in junior high at the time. And I know just last week or maybe the week before, I, I cut through, I shouldn't say cut through, I drive down Cass to Bluff 
to go south to my father's house um, multiple times a week, and I saw lots of signs up. So there clearly was um, a woman in engineering program. So can you just talk for a minute about how you do programs for the youth and try to get them engaged in science and STEM? Sure. We have an extremely robust STEM education program at the laboratory that goes from primarily middle school, a little bit elementary, but primarily middle school, all the way through to really the post-doctoral student, right? Um, there's a lot of opportunities for um, internships, programming like what you just described, Alderman Sullivan, which is called Girls, I think it's called Girls in Engineering Day. Um, so that's for high school mm -hmm. students. Um, so there are, there's a lot of programming. Of course, as you saw me mention in the beginning, the idea of building STEM pathways for young people. So we have pathway, we have a well, workforce for some of the science that's being done is really, really important to the laboratory. It's important to the Department of Energy. Um, the, I would encourage you, if you have an interest, because I wouldn't take time listing everything, um, if you go on the website and you just put in educational programs, it'll take you to our um, education program site. And you'll be just amazed at the multiple ways that your students, the students of Darien, can get involved in some of this powerful science. And I will tell you that beyond the <coughs> interest of science, you know, it's fascinating, it's, it expands the mind, it, it's mission driven in that there's always um, uh, some greater good you're trying to achieve. All of that is great, but it also pays well. I'll whisper that, don't tell my boss because she'll start looking at what it does. <laughs> but it, it really does pay well. And so for students, it's just a tremendous opportunity all the way around. Go ahead. Um, yes, I used yes. to be Society of Automotive Engineer president, and we've had a few events at, at Argonne. And I remember when we did those, we had to do a background check. So do residents have to go through a background check as well? So yes. it's not just sign up and go. You have to sort of go through a background check. Well, you that's true. Campus. That's so. true. But um, it's, it's very, if you're a U.S. citizen, it's, it's really nothing. Right. If you're a legal resident, there's one extra step you have to go through um, to make sure you're, you're eligible. But again, these are really <coughs> perfunctory. You know, it's not, it's important, it's critical. You don't want someone who's from uh, a, a, a bad actor to come to the laboratory because there are some things that don't need to be disclosed um, to bad actors, but in general, it's really not okay. a big deal. I worked in science and engineering, so I think there was more thorough background check to see who was coming than maybe just general yes, uh, yes. You know, and business person or accountant coming in, right? What are they gonna do with science, Exactly, right? and even so. for the <laughs> community leaders round table on which the mayor sits and Sylvia, and all, you, even they, if you recall, they have to fill out a form every right. time they come to the lab, but you see how quick and easy it is. It's it's nothing. Okay. They um, know us by now. Yeah. <laughs> Rotary, <Yeah. coughs> Rotary Clodarian used to have their meetings there at, we used at, to. at Aragon. And you, it was the same 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 thing, right? At, at the lodge at the little house thing. You had, they to, had? You had, to, you had to give a kid to No, call, we were in, a, in the hotel oh. area. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. the guest house. The guest house. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. But again, I bet you still had to go through that, didn't yeah. you? Yes, we did. Yeah, yeah. Robin, it's I important. Think Dan, Dan Gombeck's oh, got I'm a question. Sorry. Hi, Robin. No Hi. I, I know I was involved with uh, Argonne through from, for research for water years ago when well water was a larger issue. But regardless, um, I found it very interesting. There's a lot of scientists, and maybe that's still the case, where they're stay, I'll call it stationed at Argonne. What do they do for housing? Because one of the things that we're looking at is what's referred to as short-term rentals. Mm. So I kind of wanted to get a little bit of a background of how scientists are encouraged to come and work at Argonne and what's their typical stay? I'm not sure if you're the appropriate person to answer that. Yeah, I don't know what their typical stay is, but I do know we have a guest house for that very purpose. Okay. Um, but that's an interesting um, question. And I, I will circle back on that because um, we should, I think, if we're going to be call ourselves good neighbors, we should be encouraging um, scientists, if for some reason there's no availability at the guest house, to stay in one, support the businesses uh, that are right around the laboratory. I don't know what your, your mm. um, lodging is like in Darien, but it's certainly something that I think we should encourage. So yeah, thank you for I bringing had, that forward. I had a neighbor 
three years ago across the street from me that they were both, they were husband and wife, were scientists from uh, Switzerland that mm -hmm. worked at Argonne for a year. Really? So they were, yeah, they rented the house for a full year. Okay. And it worked out pr great for the rental for them. We, I wouldn't be able, that's, that's really, thank you for bringing that forward because I wouldn't have never thought of that. Yeah. But that's really good to know. And although we wouldn't be in the business of saying, hey, go to this alderman's property, you know, whatever. But what we could do is create a list. I could work with yeah. um, Lisa Clem, make a list, and then provide it. Let people... So if I can get one of your business cards, we can have Absolute. a chat. Absolutely, I do have. I, that's I had a neighbor too down the street yeah. that rented really? for a year. Yeah. That's were, great to know. He was yeah. a scientist. That's okay. That I'm sure he was on a longer assignment than just you know a month or two. Sure, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Excellent to know. Thank you. Anything so I've got else? two assignments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. one, <laughs> one is to make sure that you and I reconnect about electric vehicles, and the other <coughs> is to maybe work with Lisa to develop something. You know, uh, Robin, we are part of uh, the Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus. Yes. Uh, the first cohort on EV readiness with Edith Mack. You know Edith. I knew Edith, yeah, I know and Edith. And Dan has been spending a lot of time with Cheryl Scott and attending all the seminars. So we're, we're, we're looking probably for plat platinum status or silver status. I would love to tell you gold, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what <laughs> opportunities there are. Yes, uh, it's been a very evolving uh, cohort at best, and uh, you know it's really a policy guidelines uh, for um, you know municipalities all over the Chicago land area. So it's a lot of challenges, a lot of bureaucratic red tape when you mm -hmm. look at all the different departments that need to be synced together. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to reach out to you in respect to that as well. That would be good. We've got a um, systems analyst that looks at um, the, uh, and informs individuals like you who are looking at the planning of infrastructure, EV infrastructure in communities. Where's the best place? Why here as opposed to there? What do, how do your traffic patterns as, um, associate with where you're going to put your infrastructure, that kind of thing. She has a tool that's very helpful. So I'd love to put her in touch with you. Yeah. That'd be great. Great. Anything else for Robin? So, uh, Arletta? Uh, yes, uh, Robin, I, I would like to know, we used to always get kind of a report on the nuclear waste, and if you know that or how that's being disposed of, I understand that it was originally way back going to New Mexico, and then there was a fire there, and they no longer could transport there, so how is that being done, if you can give us an update on that issue? Sure. I'd appreciate that. Sure. I do know that they had, there was a, a moment where they stopped moving the nuclear waste off of the campus, um, but they have begun to resume that, um, and so it, it's not... I need to find out the schedule so that you'll know, you'll be able to see, oh, they're moving it today or whatever. But to be honest with you, it's, you would never know because it's not, it's, it's so well done. The, the material is put in <coughs> containers that are multi-layered and they're, they're huge um, containers. Uh, and then the state police escort the nuclear waste out of here and on to 55 and, and, and on the way. So it's, it really is not, there's very little time that it's in any, it's never in a neighborhood. Let's put it that way. It goes from the laboratory and pretty much right on to 55. So it's, that's why there's not a, a ton of concern, but I'm more than happy to let you know what the schedule is for when Where they're- are they shipping it? Uh, I think I can tell you what I'll, I'll share it with you. It's on my laptop, but I don't want you all to see all my <laughs> But I do know it's, it's west. Okay. It's west. Anything else? Robin, thank you very much. We thank appreciate it. Thank you for this. Thank you for the thank opportunity. <laughs> all right. That takes us to receiving of communications. Excuse me. Takes us to the city clerk's report. No report this evening, thank you. City administrator's report. Uh, no report, Mayor. Thank you.
department have information and questions any questions for either mr gone back or chief thomas on the county i'm going to kind of uh think about my computer gone down during communications uh, uh dan was able to give me an information for a resident called up saturday before easter um had a skunk a dead skunk on, on her private property and the county given she called the county and the county given her some some firm out near Kane County they're gonna charge her like four hundred dollars to yeah. get get it off and get the animal off the property well Dan found gave me a couple of resources and she was able to get it off for about 125 bucks so so and that was that's Lee Lowry on Walden um, and then for police commit for police <coughs> um, we all got emails from Courtney Mayberry regarding a stop school violence grant um, didn't uh, and I guess there's a deadline to apply for the, such a grant chief do you know anything about it yes looking into it okay I told her I would mention it during the meeting here tonight and I didn't want to forget so okay I think she wrote all of us no, she did she yeah. did and I and I, I respond I respond like I do everybody else anything else all right takes us to our treasurer's report Mike thank you mayor uh, this evening I'm requesting council's approval of warrant number 22 23 24 uh, very systematic uh, in the amount of four hundred fifty one thousand three hundred seventy nine dollars and thirteen cents from listed funds and payroll for the period ended April 6th the amount of two hundred sixty seven thousand one hundred forty dollars and eighty three cents total will be approved seven hundred eighteen thousand five hundred nineteen dollars and ninety six cents motion to approve Alderman Belzac, second by Alderman Sullivan. Any questions or comments? If none, the roll. Belzac? Aye. Sullivan? Aye. Gustafson? Aye. Kenny? Aye. Klistic? Aye. Five ayes and two absent. The warrant's been approved. Mike, uh, monthly report, February 2023. Yeah, we have February and March, and as I explained to the council during the work session, I'm just going to read the end result okay. numbers for March just to, you know, uh, for expediency uh, for the revenue expenditure report for the 11 months ended March 31st uh, general fund year-to-date revenue of seventeen million nine hundred ninety six thousand seven hundred fifty dollars expenses of eleven million nine hundred seven thousand two hundred fifty seven dollars current balance eight million nine hundred eighty eight thousand four hundred twenty eight dollars water fund year-to-date revenue six million six hundred sixty thousand five hundred six dollars expenses of six million five hundred fifty seven thousand eight hundred sixty one dollars for current balance of three million five hundred forty nine thousand four hundred fourteen dollars Motor fuel tax fund year to date revenue of one million one hundred thousand three hundred seventy four dollars, expenses of five hundred seventy thousand eight hundred ninety seven dollars, current balance of one million four hundred sixty seven thousand five hundred and twelve dollars. Water depreciation fund year to date revenue of fifty thousand four hundred forty six dollars, expenses of three million three hundred thirteen thousand four hundred fifty seven dollars, current balance four hundred ninety three thousand six hundred ninety five dollars. And capital improvement fund year to date revenue of one million nine hundred fifty one thousand three hundred thirty five dollars expenses of three million six hundred thousand one hundred ninety three dollars current balance fourteen million twenty four thousand twenty four thousand five hundred and seventy two dollars any questions for our treasurer on our monthly report alderman belzac yeah um the revenue to date is 17 million and the year-to-date budget is 14 8 are, are we expecting to have three million more in inc revenue this year wait uh, i'm sorry oh, oh, i'm well, looking at oh, um year to date <coughs> revenue versus the budget yes yes good yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank revenues, you as we've gone through in the in the budget meeting the revenues sales tax yeah. everything has been uh over what we expected this year which is a, a good healthy thing okay uh also one thing i should point out this is the 11 month period if you remember we take a pause in our monthly reports for april may and june while the auditors are completing their audit because our fiscal year ends april 30th so while they're uh, working on that and the accounting adjustments for the accrual the cash adjustments and everything are being made so th there will be a couple month pause in the preparation of these statements until the auditors complete their audit part of it so thank you mike okay Standing committee reports. Any aldermen have uh, reports they'd like to discuss? Alderman Bozak. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the Municipal Services Committee will have a meeting next Monday, the 24th of April at 6 p.m. in Council Chambers. Thank you. 
Alderwoman Sullivan. The next Administrative Finance Committee of, um, will be on Monday, May 1st at 6 p.m. in the um, conference room on the first floor at City Hall. And the next Economic Development, <coughs> De Development Committee meeting will be on Thursday, May 4th at 7 p.m. in Council Chambers. Thank you. Alderman Kenny. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, police committee meeting was canceled for this, this evening. We took the one um, I, an item and put it on the new business today because um, we're going to have a change of uh, committee members on that police committee meeting. Um, our, our next scheduled meeting is May 15th at 6 p.m. in the police um, training room across the parking lot. Thank you. Takes us to questions and comments agenda related. Anybody from the audience have any questions regarding any item that's on the agenda? If none, it moves. we move to old business. There being none, we move to the consent agenda. We have two items. Consideration of a motion to approve a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter an agreement with AIS Incorporated for computer consulting services in the amount of $96,024. Item B, consideration of a motion to approve one electronics recycling event with the city's current refuse hauler, Lakeshore Re Recycling System, in an amount not to exceed $9,800. Motion to approve the consent agenda. Alderwoman Sullivan, second by Alderman Kenny, and the roll. Sullivan? Aye. Kenny? Aye. Plistic? Aye. Belzac? Aye. Gustafson? Aye. Five ayes and two absents. The consent agenda has been approved. Takes us to new business. We have a number of items under new business. Item A, consideration of a motion to approve a resolution waiving the competitive bid process and awarding a quote for the purchase of one new 2022 Ford F450 cab and chassis 4x4 from Coons Auto Group in the amount of $131,273.26. Motion to approve. Alderman Belzac, second by Alderman Kenny. Any questions or comments? If none, the roll. Belzac? Aye. Kenny? Aye. Sullivan? Aye. Gustafson? Aye. Klistic? Aye. Five ayes and two absents. Item has been approved. Item B, consideration of a motion to approve a resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute a collective bargaining agreement between the Metropolitan Alliance of Police, Darien Police Civilian Employees, <coughs> Chapter 147, Unit B, non-sworn employees, and the city of Darien for a period of May 1st, 2023 through April 30th, 2026. Motion to approve. Alderman Kenny, seconded by Alderman Belzac. Any questions or comments? None the roll. Kenny? Aye. Belzac? Aye. Klistic? Aye. Gustafson? Aye. Sullivan? Aye. Five ayes and two absent. And the motion's been approved. Item C. Consideration of a motion to approve a resolution authorizing the mayor and the city clerk to execute an intergovernmental agreement between the Board of Education of Hinsdale Township High School District 86 and the City of Darien authorizing school resource officer services for 2023-2024 in auto, re auto renewal. Motion to approve. Alderwoman Sullivan. Seconded by Alderman Kenny. And again, questions or comments? Chief, this was the item that would have been on our police committee meeting tonight. Do you want to, do you want to talk about it a little bit since we didn't talk about that, since we didn't have a meeting on that? Sure, it comes up every year. And uh, there's the only real uh, addition is that uh, so we don't have to keep coming back every year. It's going to be an auto renewal unless uh, one of the two parties don't want to continue. <coughs> That's the only thing they did. Anybody, anyone else? If none, the roll. Sullivan? Aye. Kenny? Aye. Belzac? Aye. Gustafson? Aye. Klistic? Aye. Five ayes and two absent. And the <coughs> last item is consideration of a motion to approve a resolution extending a proposal from JC Landscaping and Tree Service for the purchase and installation of landscape plantings and decorative rock for the Ellsworth and Stewart Overland Flow Drainage Project in an amount not to exceed $13,600. Motion to approve. Alderman Belzac, second by Alderman Sullivan. Questions or comments? If none, the roll. 
Belzac? Aye. Sullivan? Aye. Gustafson? Aye. Klistic? Aye. Kenny? Aye. Five ayes and two absent. And that motion has been approved. Takes us to the last item, which is questions, comments, and announcements of a general nature. Anybody on the council have anything they'd like to share? Mary? Um, I just have a question. So is it the next meeting that um, the changing of the guard happens? The next meeting, May 1st, would normally be the schedule where we would uh, swear in uh, all the new elected officers and we would uh, say goodbye to the, op the aldermen who are leaving. Uh, we would also uh, ask for the advice and consent of the council for the new committee assignments because the, the committees will change. And we will al also be asking for the reappointment of uh, Chief Thomas, uh, Mr. Gombeck, and the continuation of services from Mr. Vanna. So that'll all be on the agenda for May 1st. That's what it, it's scheduled for that. Okay. We're trying to keep some other items off of there until the, the 15th because this will be a very busy meeting with that. Okay. Anything else? If not, uh, motion to adjourn. Alderman Kenny, second by Alderman Sullivan. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone.